Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us for another session of Build Your AutoCAD IQ. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, uh, welcome. And for those of you who are joining us uh, again, welcome back. Uh, today we'll be talking about section planes and point clouds in AutoCAD 2016. This is a, um, a continuation of our third dimension series. Uh, we'll have two presenters today. Uh, Martin Stewart will be presenting uh, the section plane portion of the uh, presentation, and I will be, I'm Victoria Studley, I'll be presenting the point cloud portion. We also have a moderator with us. Uh, he's joined us again this week, uh, Noma Misorawala, one of our expert elites. You might have seen him around in the uh, community forums. And he'll be assisting on uh, chat, um, in the chat window, and um, he may chime in from time to time. All right, Martin, go ahead and switch us to that next slide there. All right, uh, so Martin and I will be joining you from um, Manchester, New Hampshire, and Lake Oswego, Oregon, respectively. Uh, we are both Autodesk technical support specialists uh, who work on the AutoCAD team. And Noman uh, joins us from Cincinnati, Ohio. So uh, again, this is part of our Autodesk help webinar series. We have a couple of products that are supported there. Um, we uh, have this AutoCAD series, and there are some other ones. If you want to check them out, uh, click on the More Autodesk Help Webinars link there down in the right-hand corner. So we will be answering your questions in the chat window. Uh, the session will be recorded and posted to YouTube later, and the links will be provided in the post-webinar survey, and you can also find them in the chat window already. Uh, we have some upcoming webinars, uh, Tips and Tricks, Introduction to AutoCAD Architecture is next week. Uh, we did send out in, uh, a reminder for that yesterday by accident, but that will be next week if you're looking for that. Um, <clears throat> the following week will be Back to Basics, Intro to Navigation, and then we'll join you again for our Third Dimension series uh, with a topic to be determined on March 10th. And then on March 17th, we'll have a Beyond the Basics, uh, Customizing Your CUI. Uh, you can download the data set that you'll see in today's presentation by clicking on the link here in the, um, uh, in the PowerPoint or um, click on the link in the chat window there. You can find us on YouTube uh, if you want to see this session uh, after it's recorded and posted up or uh, previous sessions that we've hosted. All right, Martin. You ready for some polls? We are. All right. So our first poll, uh, we'd like to know, is this your first AutoCAD webinar, uh, Autodesk help webinar? So go ahead and tell us yes or no. Have you joined us before? Is this your first time? All right. Leave that open for a couple more seconds. All right. And it looks like most of you are joining us uh, again. So about 10% of you, I'll share that out. <clears throat> about 10% of you are joining us for the first time, so welcome. And to those of you, again, who are joining us again, uh, welcome back. Um, we've got two more here for you before we get started. We'd like to know which AutoCAD-based application you use. Do you use uh, AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT, uh, one of our vertical softwares like Architecture, MEP, AutoCAD Electrical, Mechanical, uh, Plant, Civil 3D, Map, uh, do, or do you use something else entirely? Okay, I'll give you a couple more seconds to answer there. And we'll close it out. let you see those results. It looks like most of you are working in the full version of AutoCAD, followed by uh, LT, and then a mix of our, uh, our vertical softwares. All right, so the last one before we jump into the, the presentation here. Do you use any of the following in AutoCAD? Uh, you can select as many of these as you like. Um, do you use 3D modeling? And if you do use 3D modeling, have you used section planes in AutoCAD? And have you had any experience with point clouds? Uh, if you haven't used any of them, go ahead and click on none of these yet, and hopefully we'll 
uh, inspire you to try them out uh, with today's presentation. All right, I'll close out this poll and I'll show you those results. It uh, looks like most of you have tried 3D modeling, um, or a good portion of you have, but most of you haven't tried any of these. So uh, if you'd like to play around with them, you will see the data set from today posted uh, shortly and um, after the presentation, and I encourage you to play around with them uh, to get familiar with them. All right, Martin. There we go. Okay, so this week's agenda includes section objects and live sectioning, which Martin will be talking about shortly. Um, after that, I'll talk to you a little bit about point clouds in AutoCAD and how to generate geometry from uh, point clouds in order to um, uh, speed up your design process. And here are a couple of examples of those point clouds. And then we'll turn the presentation over to Martin. All right, Martin, take it away. Thank you, Victoria. So we're going to jump right into the section planes part of our webinar. You might recognize this. It's an, it's an excerpt from our data set from our last 3D webinar. I'm playing with a kitchen design, so this is just a portion of that model. And so you'll see a rounded cabinet and uppers, and then there's a lot of um, interior things happening here. So one of the first topics I wanted to just hit on before we get into the picks and clicks is why do you need to use section planes and live sectioning? What's the advantage, advantages of that? Well, one advantage right off, as you can see, is it's hard to look into the inside of this. So once it's modeled, um, how do I get in there and see what's going on and analyze it? Of course, one way is to shut certain layers off or freeze them or isolate things, but also sectioning can be a very helpful tool to add to your toolkit to get in there and, and be able to visualize models as you're working on them. So really it can serve as a, a design and analysis tool so you can get in there and, and look around. Also it's a valuable presentation tool and you can also, we'll show you, create geometry with it. And then for some old school folks out there, if we have some architects and interior designers, uh, it can be really nice to get uh, views like this printed out on hard copy and then lay trace over them and do different iterations of your design. And you can also get views like this through sectioning where a section a plan section really helps uh, customers and others visualize your design intent. So going back to this uh, model, let's look at the section tools. Uh, we're in the Home tab. We're in the 3D modeling workspace. So again, this is full AutoCAD and not AutoCAD LT for our 3D series. So in the Home tab, we have the section panel. And here's the section plane where you create uh, a section plane to get the cut. And notice the command uh, is section plane. And then I might mention, you probably see this a lot, hit F1 for, for more help. But the help feature is a very powerful tool to remind you about certain commands and functionality. And in our PowerPoint slide deck, we also have a link to the online version of this, so just a little reminder that you'll get a lot of good tips here uh, to refresh your memory on certain tools. So let's step through how to create some section planes and what the various options are for that. So I'm in a 3D mode and I can orbit with a shift in my middle mouse button and do a free orbit, or I can use my view cube, and if I hit section plane, or type in the command section plane, here's the options I get. So let's look at that carefully. I can select a face or any point to locate the section line. So for example, if I hover over the floor here, and if I were to click, it would give me a, a section plane or section object right on that floor. And 
frankly, that's not my preference because it, it makes the section plane right tight to the surface. And I like it to be uh, beyond the edges, makes it a little easier to control that section plane. We can also hit draw section or D for short and that's a handy way to do it where you just draw your section line and we can demonstrate that. And then another very, very valuable way to do it is the orthographic feature. So we're all familiar with the basic orthographic views. Uh, these correspond to what we see up here on the view cube, top, left, right. So if I hit top, it's going to place the section plane for me. And that's a pretty good um, way to do it. And then how to get rid of section planes is very simply you select them and you hit delete. So that's how you remove a section plane once it's inserted. I'm going to type in the command section plane. That's the same thing as if I selected this button in my section panel. And this time I'm going to try the draw section feature. So I have to hit D to invoke that. And I'm just going to eyeball it and pick a point here. And then I have my ortho on down here. My ortho toggle is on. So it's giving me a straight shot. I can do a free orbit to get a better view over here. And I'm going to stop here. And I'm, I could continue with a jog, but I'm going to hit return to get my plane. So there's my section plane, and it's asking me to specify in the direction of the section view. I'm going to select over here because I want to be looking that way. So you'll notice if we go back to our section plane and expand this, we have section settings, and we'll show that in a minute. But how do you activate this section plane? Well, first pick it. And notice that it is active. <coughs> so we would expect all of this geometry to disappear. And we would only want to see what's behind it. So why isn't this activated? Well, there's, this takes a lot of processing power, and it varies based on your hardware configuration, your video card, or whether you have hardware, uh, your hardware acceleration on, graphics config, on or off can make a difference. So one important tip or trick I wanted to show you is how to expedite getting this live section to generate is just go ahead and hit a save, a quick save. And then that generates the graphic. So hopefully you'll remember that tip. It can be really frustrating when you start a live section and it doesn't look very different from a uh, the whole model or you just get partial results, just hit a quick save and in most cases that will invoke the live section. So now you can see what, what a powerful visualization tool that is. We can see inside beyond those walls, see the different counters, the openings, the walls beyond. So that is live sectioning. It's as easy as that. But what else can we do with this? Well, remembering back to our previous webinar, we can use different visual styles. So I can change the visual style on the fly. Go to conceptual, for example. Um, go to, let's say, shades of gray. Get different views here. And um, speaking of views, we can save views like we discussed in our last uh, webinar. So if I were to invoke the view command, I could go ahead and save this as a view with the live section plane. So we might want to review that from our last 3D webinar. Uh, another thing to do or to demonstrate here in our webinar is the different options now that we have with this plane. So once you've created a plane, you can also change the type of plane it is or type of section. And there are four types here. We're in the plane section. We can do a slice, a boundary, and a volume. And again, the help feature up here uh, will help you review all of these later. But let's try slice, for example. 
slice gives you a thickness in the model, which is determined here. And let's widen that out some. I'm going to put in 50 inches. And let me rotate down so we can see that. And then let me do my save command. And you see that taking effect. So there's the 50 inch width that we entered there. Let me go ahead and undo that or actually again highlight the plane right click let's review these right click options this is how you can turn it on and off activate it and this is also how you can get to the settings let's go ahead and deactivate this so this is now no longer live sectioning but we still see the the results of the section so again remember the tip to go ahead and do a quick save to force that to generate and then that comes back to us Let's talk about the properties of this section object. So this section plane is an object and we can modify the properties of that object. And so we can either highlight it here and use the pull down right there to get to that section plane settings, or you can activate it, highlight it, and then right click and get to the live section settings here as well. So here's the various settings. Remember, these all pertain to this section object or this section plane. So what do we have going on here? We have a boundary. That's this boundary line of the plane. We're using the color 8 for that. It's a continuous line type. That's all good. Then we have a section fill. So that's this area here on the plane. We're showing that fill, and we've got it as a solid. Let me widen this out. But it could be a hatch. We can change color. So you can get cross hatching in your section, and that's all controlled here. And then the cutaway geometry, we're saying we do not want to see it when it's a live uh, section. We'll come back to this, these settings here in a moment, because notice you can also generate um, blocks from here. So once you've got the section set up how you want it, you can create a new block and that's really a powerful tool. It's very cool to have and that's how we created this. We created geometry once we set a section plan, once we set that up. So coming back to this drawing, I'm going to change my visual style. I'm going to go to conceptual and let's see, I want to demonstrate one more time real quickly how to do a jogged section. So actually maybe it's easier to go to a top view and you can rotate this with the view cube. <clears throat> I know that there's some countertops and walls in there that I want to jog around through my section but I'm just flying in the dark here so what do I do? Well this is a good opportunity to change the visual style to something that lets you see a little better. So I've set it to x-ray. Now I can see exactly how I'd like to jog a section, for example. So from here I can invoke the section plane again. I'm going to draw the section one more time. I'm going to start out here like I did last time and start moving. I'm going to stop right here. And I'm going to jog to here and then go up so I can cut through there and then return to stop that command. So I've just drawn a jog and I need to still specify the direction of the section view. So if I pick here, this is the side we'll see when live sectioning is activated or if I pick here. And you can switch this afterwards. You can change the direction, but I'm going to go ahead and pick this side. I'll use the corner of my view cube to get to a quick uh, 3D view. And so I'm kind of done with my x-ray visual style now. I'm going to switch to conceptual, for example. I'm going to use my free orbit to get a better angle on that. And then how do I activate that? Well, first, 
pick the section plane and then it is showing as a live section being activated so why isn't it cut away? Well here's again that tip, that trick to expedite that and if you went and got a cup of coffee and came back you'd probably see the results but this really speeds things up by hitting save and then there's the section. So that's a very cool trick and then once you get get it how you want it, let's show one more feature of sectioning. We go to our highlight that, it activates our section plane ribbon and then we can generate a block from this. So you can generate a section of what we're seeing. This is a very powerful feature. It could be a 2D section or a 3D block. I'm going to hit a 3D section and create that so you can see the results. And notice this pops up over here. You can change the scale factor or the rotation. I'm just going to hit return and insert that in there. So we had a little odd behavior here. We could do that again, go through the process again, but once you've got this section, now that's a full object. So there's other fun things you can do with that. You could select it and W block it out and have new geometry. You can also use a command that you may be familiar with called flat shot and generate a 2D view of this exact representation, even exporting it to another file. And again, that's what uh, I did here. I set this up, did the cut how I want it, did a flat shot, saved it to another file, and then once you're in this drawing, this is its own drawing, I can hatch the cut line. I could put this into uh, Photoshop, for example, and really play with the graphics there. So another powerful um, workflow and tool to use there. I could delete that and come back to this view. Another thing you can do is go ahead and right click and deactivate that. Save it to get your full model back and go ahead and create another section plane. You don't have to do one at a time but you only can have one active at a time. So that is our quick overview of the possibilities and functionality of using the section plane and the various uh, section plane uh, methods. So at this point, I think I'll go ahead and turn it back over to Victoria. Thanks, Martin. That was fantastic. All right. Let me see if I can give you control now. Oh, I'll just take it. <laughs> oh, good. There That's we go. quick. All right. Uh, here we go. Just let me know when you can see my screen. I see it. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. Uh, so, thank you, Martin. That was a wonderful introduction to... Uh, section planes in AutoCAD. Uh, the reason that we put the section planes before the point clouds is because uh, we'll be using a couple of section planes here in the point cloud portion of the demonstration. Uh, so before us, um, this is a point cloud generated from a site called Red Rocks uh, Amphitheater. It is out in Colorado and um, here you'll see, I'm just going to select this point cloud here. Uh, the bounding box here is showing the point cloud and then there's some geometry uh, built in here that um, we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, so first and foremost, a point cloud is a large collection of points uh, that is generated from a, a 3D laser scanner or um, uh, by a 3D laser scanner and then processed through um, software like Recap, and then uh, it'll give you a, uh, a cloud of thousands or probably millions and millions of points here. 
um, to create a, a very accurate representation of existing conditions. Uh, it's very good for site plans. Um, if you do any historic preservation or um, you're working right up against other buildings, uh, like this one here, um, this can help you quickly document a project that you're working on and, and jumpstart the design process for you. Um, so we've got this, um, I've already pulled the point cloud into this drawing, uh, but I'll just pop over here to show you. Uh, we are working again in the 3D modeling workspace. Uh, if you're having trouble finding that, it's down here by the workspace gear. Um, just click on the little arrow next to it and click on 3D modeling. Um, from here, if you navigate over to the insert tab on the ribbon, and then take a look all the way over to the right, there's a point cloud panel on the ribbon. And this one here will launch ReCap, which is our uh, reality capture software that indexes the scans that you take out in the field and turns them into uh, workable point cloud project files. Um, we're not going to talk about a lot of the details to do with how ReCap works. Um, we're assuming at this point that you've uh, taken the point cloud, processed it, and then you're bringing it into AutoCAD, and we can show you what you can do with it inside AutoCAD. Uh, so the first thing that you can do is attach a point cloud, and that's the second button over here. Uh, you can also use the point cloud attach command uh, to insert a point cloud. So you would navigate through, um, find the point cloud in here. There's usually... Oh, where is it? I have it written down. Uh, there, there's a sample file. Anyway, if you've installed Recap, it comes with a, a sample point cloud that you can play with. Um, but I'll also provide this one to you afterwards if you want to download it. Fair warning, it is a very large file. Uh, so give yourself a coffee break to download it. Um, so after you click on Attach, it'll ask you to insert it here. And it'll insert it into the file um, as an XREF, uh, external reference. So if I click on my point cloud, once it's attached, it brings up this contextual ribbon for point clouds and gives me a bunch of options for modifying the appearance of the point cloud uh, within AutoCAD. Um, you can also, let's start over here with the options. Um, you can open up the point cloud manager here and Inside each project, um, there is a hierarchy of different scans. Oh, why is it not doing that for this one? I'm just going to open it up using the command line here. Point Cloud Manager. Nope. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Uh, that should be showing, um, there's typically a hierarchy uh, of, the, um, of the different scans that comprise the point cloud here. Um, so I'm not sure why that's not showing up. Um, that one really looks cool though. It does, yeah, it, it actually jumped me over to the 3D view. Um, it jumped me mm -hmm. over to a perspective view of the uh, of the point cloud, so you get that nice perspective look in there. Um, we will we'll move on from this. Um, there should be a, a list where you can turn off different portions of the point cloud so that you're only seeing a certain section that was scanned all at once or another, uh, they call them regions or scans. Um, from here, I'm going to do uh, one of the tricks that we learned in the last um, presentation and jump over to my point cloud isometric view, which brings us back to where we were before. Um, again, those named views come in really handy. Okay, so we'll select the point cloud again, and there are a couple of things, there are a couple of properties that you can uh, modify here um, with the point cloud. The first one is the size of the points. So I'm just going to zoom in on this amphitheater portion of the model, and you'll be able to see as I drag the point size to the right, those points get very large and fuzzy, um, larger dots. 
Uh, so depending on how you want to display this, um, you can adjust this to whatever you like. I'll just knock it back down to one. You get that fine detail in there. Um, the level of detail. So this will, um, you'll see it, it, as you bump the detail up, you see more of the points in the cloud. As you knock the detail back down, you lose a uh, percentage of the points there. So if you have a very dense point cloud and it's really hard to work with, you might um, lower the density. Okay, so there's also transparency. And so instead of, instead of losing the detail by um, uh, lowering the density, if you want to maintain the density of your point cloud, but you just want to be able to see what's next to it a little clearer or see through it a little better, um, let me jump to a better view for this. Um, yeah. Okay, so maybe we want to be able to see through this a little better, um, see through the trees to be able to see the geometry that we built behind it. Uh, I'll select my point cloud and you'll see that it becomes more and more transparent. It's a little easier to see the model that you built up against it. And it makes it easier to work if you're um, designing in relation to a point cloud. And that makes for great presentation graphics, too. That looks awesome. It does. <laughs> All right, so we'll select this again. Um, another thing that you can do is adjust the um, coloration of the point cloud model. Um, for this one, uh, so right now I have this set to scan colors, which is the exact color that is captured out in the field when the scanner um, creates that point cloud. Uh, you can do this by object color. So that depends on what color you've um, assigned to that point cloud object. It's either by layer, um, I have it set by layer, but you could come in here and let's say you want the point cloud to be red, you could change it to red or yellow and every point in the cloud will then appear as that color. Um, this one is normal. There we go. Oh, it's not going to tell me what normal does, but it does adjust the color there. Um, this one is by intensity. And then this one down here is elevation. Um, this one I find the most useful with site plans um, because if you come over here, I've saved a couple other views. Uh, let's take a look at the left one. You get a really good look at your overall site plan and, and the elevation uh, of the entire site model. So if I come in here, uh, another handy thing is, um, let's say you, um, you know, you need it every 10 feet, or um, maybe you know how many colors you want to show. If you click on color mapping, uh, you can change it from grayscale to blues, or uh, let's see, green is often easier to see on the screen here. Um, where are we? Uh, we can change the number of colors. So we'll change it to, let's say, 20, and we'll say OK. And that gives you that nice um, variation uh, from dark to light. Um, you can also invert this so the dark colors are on top. Um, you can re-ramp it based on the uh, first and last colors there. Uh, display it as a gradient so that it's a smoother looking um, color if you don't want to see the gradation lines. Uh, that's a nicer way to display it. Okay, I'm going to undo that and okay. So you can come in here and adjust this to your liking is uh, what I'm trying to get at. I'm going to change this back to the scan colors um, for now so that we can uh, move on here. All right, so something else that you might want to do is um, crop the point cloud. Let's say we only need to work in the amphitheater portion, uh, which is right over here. Um, I'll 
manipulate the model here. Uh, a note on navigation. Uh, you can navigate around this using the same 3D navigation tools that you use for other 3D modeling. That um, uh, shift middle mouse button will do the 3D orbit for you, which is what I'm displaying right there. So you see there's a parking lot down there. You see the back of the site. Um, we'll come around this way, though. Uh, let's say we only want to see this amphitheater portion. Um, you can crop a point cloud so you're only seeing uh, the portion that you want to see. Um, so you can crop uh, rectangular, polygonal, or circular. Now, we're just going to use the rectangular one for now because that is the general shape that we're trying to maintain. Um, so I'll just pull it in here and then we'll say we want to keep the inside or I'll demonstrate it right now. Um, if I choose outside, it's going to just keep all the points outside of the box that I just selected. So I'll go back and uh, use that rectangular cropping and I'm going to choose inside this time so that we're just keeping what's inside of it. And then if you wanted to crop in a different um, dimension here, uh, let's say we only wanted to show the truss up here. You can come in and crop here and you can keep doing this uh, until you get it exactly the way that you want. Keep rotating that view cube, um, cut it down to exactly what you want to see, uh, and you can get a, a fine level of accuracy there. You can also, um, once you have this the way that you like it, maybe I just want to save this um, so that I can get back to it really quickly. Uh, there are crop states which allow you to save exactly what it sounds like, uh, save the crop that you've just uh, spent all that time getting to. So if you click on new crop state or use the point cloud crop state command, you'll just be prompted to give it a name and I'll say uh, truss. And it'll end up in this drop down list here. Um, so I have a couple saved right now to help me get back to where I want to go because if I um, if I zoom out here, uh, you'll notice I'm, I'm missing the rest of it now. It maintains that crop state even if I go into another view. Um, so I can click on the point cloud, go back into my crop state list, and I can look at just the amphitheater, which I cropped earlier. Or I can go back to show all. So that comes in really handy if you're just working in a, like one portion at a time in a project. You can break it up into smaller, more manageable pieces. Okay. Oh, uh, one more note on that. Um, there are, you can uncrop everything or uncrop the last crop that you just made in case you've been trying to crop it down to a particular spot and you messed up. Uh, there is an undo built right in there. Uh, you can invert it. So if, like before, I, I chose outside instead of inside, um, you can invert the crop so that all the uh, points that are hidden are now shown and vice versa. Okay. So another handy thing with point clouds is that they are, um, they do also work with section planes. Uh, so Martin demonstrated some of those section planes before. Um, I've already drawn a couple in here, but I'll, uh, I'll just demonstrate how it works um, very quickly for you here. And, oh, I'm just going to choose section plane. Oh, come on. We'll do front. Ah, there we go. Okay. Um, so it will, if, if you activate the section plane command from within the point cloud, uh, contextual ribbon here, it will um, crop, let's say I, I chose uh, uh, front, I chose front view, right? Yeah, I chose front. Um, it will detect that uh, just on the, the point cloud itself. Um, so that's done that for me. And um, I'm not sure why um, some machines will generate that live section automatically and some won't. Uh, but you can see here that uh, this one did generate it all the way through and through, um, 
It might just be a difference in hardware or uh, graphics cards or something. Uh, it might be the file itself. Who knows? Um, it's good, that, though. Yeah, yeah. And if, if um, that hadn't cropped out all the way, if it hadn't activated the live section automatically, um, I, I could use Martin's quick trick to uh, save the file and get it to update. All right. So I'm just going to delete this one now that we've seen that you can use it there. Um, and then I will show you, where are we? Point cloud front. Oh, okay. So here's a view of the point cloud um, from the front, which we saw earlier. Uh, but let's say I only want to see uh, that amphitheater portion. What I've done is I've created a section plane slice through the front um, mm. that only demonstrates a section through that amphitheater portion. Um, so I'll rotate it on its side here for a second. You can see it's a it's just a slice through that amphitheater. Um, so what I can do from here, and this is really cool, is um, instead of generate section block, uh, you could use extract section lines, which will extract geometry from a point cloud. So if you click on this, it prompts you to select the point cloud. So I'll go until that frame shows up. And then it's going to bring up this extract section lines from point cloud dialog box. Um, so you can do an entire cross section, or you can just do the perimeter of the point cloud. Uh, I'm going to leave it as entire cross section. Um, you can pick which layer you're going to put it on. I'll just use the current layer, and that's fine. Um, but if you had one specifically for sections, you could put it on there. Oh, I did make one. All right, I'll put it on A section. Um, we'll make it, we'll leave it green, that's fine. Um, you can do lines or 2D polylines. You can set the polyline width. So I've set it to two just to make it easy for everybody to see on the screen here. Um, if you set this to maximum points to process, it's going to take forever. So for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to bump it down to 5,000, um, maybe a little more. Um, I can exit out of this while it's still in preview mode, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. Uh, you get the estimate right here, though, for how long it's going to take. The higher, the more points it has to process, the longer it's going to take. So I'll bump this back down to like 1,600. Um, you will get less accuracy with the quicker time. Uh, so there is a little bit of a trade-off there. Uh, your extraction tolerances, this is the minimum line length that you want to generate. And um, this right here is the, uh, the tolerance for connecting lines together within the, uh, the section when it's generated. Um, so, oh, right here, uh, the preview results. Uh, will allow you to quickly preview what it's going to look like and then come back into the settings and adjust them to suit your needs um, without having to go through the whole process and then undo and then redo it again. So I'll leave this as preview. We'll say create. <clears throat> Hopefully this does not take too, too long. Uh, usually it's less than a minute. But um, like I said, with that preview, if this was taking too long, uh, and I love this for demonstration purposes, um, I can press escape and cancel out of this. So we'll give it another few seconds here. I don't want to wait all wait around all day for it. Yeah, this might take a little longer. So I'll hit escape. And then I can come in and uh, try this again. So I'll go in here, select my point cloud. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, now I'm just going to bump this all the way down for demonstration's sake. It's only going to process about 5,000 points, which is not a lot uh, in this point cloud. So I'll say create, but you'll see it will go much faster. And then we get a nice um, demonstration of what this looks like. And you'll see the prompt um, down the bottom asking me if I like the results, if I want to accept them, or change the settings. So you have the option to accept, go back to the settings, or undo. Uh, so I'll just zoom in here and say, okay, well, 
you know, I'm pretty happy with this result. Um, for only 5,000 points, this actually did a really nice job um, of generating those lines based on the point cloud geometry. You get the nice line of the, uh, the truss up there. So I'll say uh, settings, so that we could go back and you'll see that brings me back in here. You can't change the maximum points to process when you're in the middle of this and you can't change uh, the type of extraction you're doing. But you can change all of the other settings. So if you want your polyline width to be thicker or thinner, uh, or you want to go from polylines to lines or vice versa, change the layer, um, any of these things, you can change them and then go back out and create and then say accept. And what that does is generates all of these polylines here, um, which if you put them on a section layer, you can use to quickly generate a section of your point cloud um, so that you can start modeling um, either a renovation or a, a new build that builds up against that uh, existing point cloud geometry. Okay. So that is section planes and generating geometry from section planes through point clouds. Um, where did I go here? Ah, this was just another section through this, uh, through the other way. This is a whole site plan. So if you wanted that site line, you could do the same thing with this section and get that nice site line generated for you automatically instead of having to spend all day trying to measure it um, based on geographic data. Okay. So from here, I will go back to PCO Snap Demo. Uh, so the last thing we'll talk about here is um, point clouds and object snaps. With 2016, we added a few more um, point cloud object snaps, which are, oh, I don't have them turned on here. Uh, if you click on the right-hand side here, it'll pop out the flyout menu on your status bar. And then we'll go through and find 3D object snap and turn that on, and also dynamic UCS. So we'll make sure that our dynamic UCS is turned on, and it is. Uh, I'm just going to turn off 2D O snaps so that we don't get confused. And then come in here, and I'm going to turn off all the other 3D object snaps. Um, so the first thing that you can do is click on the node of a point cloud. So I'll just use the line command. And sometimes you have to hover over and wait a second, especially if it's a large point cloud. Um, but you'll notice that these planes start popping up as I move around. All of these planes um, were generated through recap in what's called a segmented point cloud. Um, in order for the object snaps to work, the um, uh, the ones I'm going to demonstrate in a in a minute here, they uh, the point cloud does need to be segmented. Uh, which means that it has these planes uh, that make up um, surfaces, or it's a series of points that are uh, that lie on the same plane and uh, form a a plane or a surface that can be detected within the point cloud as you move around, and that's detected by that dynamic UCS. So this is just going to pick nodes. Let's show you. Uh, where are we? Okay. This will just get you to the nearest plane of a point cloud. This will give you a perpendicular line to that. Um, the intersection of a point cloud. So this would be where uh, a point cloud touches something else. Um, these ones are what I want to demonstrate for you today. Uh, the nearest to edge point cloud will find the edge between two surfaces or two planes within a point cloud. So, okay, so nearest to edge. Mm, that's not doing what I wanted to do. Okay, there's the edge turned on. Oh, 
All right, it's gonna. Ah, there we go. Okay, I got one. There, you see how the two, um, the two planes lit up? That's the edge between those two planes. So I can draw on there. Um, what I'm trying to get is this corner here to show you something really cool. All right, so I got the edge between the two, and I can pick on that, and I'm going to just drag down until I find uh, another edge between these two. Come on. Perfect. Okay, so now I have a line there. It might be kind of hard to see, like we were talking about earlier. Um, so you can select that point cloud and bump the transparency up, and you'll start to see that line that I drew with the point cloud faded in the background. So that comes in really handy here. And I'll just leave it like this so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm just going to zoom out from that point. Um, another really cool object snap in here is the corner of a point cloud. So that'll be the intersection of three planes. So you'll see like in here, I get that little corner. I can drag this up here and just get that corner really quickly. And then the final one that I want to demonstrate for you, oh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, is the nearest center line of cylinder. Now this one's really cool. Do you see this curved wall here? Um, if I want to find the circle or the, the center of that circle, I can do it with this object snap. You'll see that big purple donut show up and it detects the center line of that uh, curve. So I'll just click right there and it snaps me right to the middle. And then I'll just draw this straight down. Just to strike my line. And I'll show you one really easy way to continue that curve of the building. Let's say we wanted to uh, continue that geometry along that same curve. A really quick way to do that is to, uh, let's see, we'll go over to, oh, where are we? Here we go. Okay, we'll say extrude. And we'll pick that line and enter. Oh, no, oh, sorry. Uh, not extrude, I want to revolve. Um, where are we? Revolve here. Okay, so revolve, um, we're going to pick the object that we want to revolve and then pick the line, the axis, that we want to revolve around. So it's asking me for the axis, but I can also pick an object. So I'm going to say O for object and select this line that we made. Ah, there we go. Okay. So now we get this, um, now we get this surface that's being revolved around that uh, axis. And I want to reverse the direction, so R for reverse. And I can quickly drag this out to where I want it to go. And so now I have that geometry projected, and I can continue that wall really quickly. That was cool. Yeah, I like that one a lot. Um, all right. So I think think that's all I have. Yeah, okay, that's about everything. Um, cool stuff. Let me, let me just go back to this here. This geometry here was all generated doing the same thing that we just did there. It was uh, helping it interface with the, um, with the point cloud. So if I jump into that left, oh, sorry, no, the front view again. Um, that shows you that geometry within the point cloud there. What you can do with point clouds. All right. Ta -da. Well, we have a few minutes left for questions. Uh, Martin, do you want to take control back over the presentation, run that final poll? Okay. So do you see my screen? Not yet. Yes, now I do. 
Okay. And so there's one more poll. And we'll go ahead and start that. So did you learn something new today? Looks like the majority have. Awesome. We'll go ahead and close that and we can share the results there. Wow, 96%. All right. I'm glad we could help you guys uh, learn something new about AutoCAD today. Uh, do we have any questions in the last couple minutes here? Um, I thought I saw one in there about uh, I thought I saw one in there about where do point clouds come from. Um, I think I said this earlier, but they, they're, uh, they're scanners that you can use. Um, they're also, if you don't have one or work in a firm that has one, um, there are companies that contract to do these. They come in, they put it on like a tripod stand, and it's like a really fancy camera scanner thing. And it scans the, the environment, and then you move it around um, the site, and then you take those scans back and process them through software to create um, uh, point cloud scans. And then you can bring them through Recap to make them compatible um, with a program like AutoCAD. And that's how you get them in here. They'll be RCS or RCP files. Noman, no, do I hear you in the background there? Yeah, I was just, uh, I think uh, Martin answered that question uh, about um, can you crop 3D elements like uh, she is in the cloud in two perpendicular planes. And Martin said that uh, you could use jobs to do that. Yeah. Um, oh, in the uh, well, what do you just cutting mean? a, a section that? plane in your point cloud. Oh, through the can point you, cloud. Yes. Can you cut it in more than one direction? Yeah, yeah. Um, they work the same way that three um, D geometry does. Uh, they're compatible with jogs. They're compatible with um, all the other features of the section planes. So where do you get your point clouds, you know, for for demonstration, but also in an actual project, where do the point clouds come from? Okay. Uh, this particular one came from uh, the development team or the product management team um, from last year when uh, typically there's a data set that comes out that we use to demonstrate new features. Uh, that's where I got this one from. Um, I'll upload it later for you guys to play around with. It's a uh, Hmm. Yeah, and then I think I just answered the question about where or how you would get your own for your own particular site plan. Um, either you, either your company has a scanner or um, you can uh, contract somebody, uh, contract a service to do it for you. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Right. Any others? I don't see any new questions. Okay, I do see. Other than people want to make sure that everything's available for a download later. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Um, I'll try to upload them either today or tomorrow, uh, depending on when I get everything all together and uh, packaged up. Um, but they, they will be on that box link that you can find in the chat window or uh, in the slide deck. And. Could you remind our audience how to do follow-up questions on the forum? Yes. Um, go to, where are we? I think I have that slide up yeah. now. Do you have the, do you have the link? Uh, yeah, it says, um, it says ask follow-up questions, but there's not a, the link isn't written out. Um, you can oh, go, so you go to, to the, uh, yeah, go to the registration page for the webinars, and there's a link there. Um, for so the, we have yeah, less AutoCAD webinar feedback post. So we have less than a minute. Okay. Uh, you can also email us, which is what uh, what uh, what was up there as well. Autodesk. Webinars at Autodesk. Com. And make sure you put build your AutoCAD IQ in the subject line, and and we'll see it. Thanks, Victoria. That was cool. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Martin, and thank you, Noman. Did you have any? Uh, do you guys have any final notes? I 
I think we covered it. Look forward to doing it again in about three weeks. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys all for showing up. We appreciate you uh, turning out for the webinars here, and we'll see you again next week. Bye, everybody.